It's now a few days later again and I can't quite recall where I left you but you will notice there is now another window in the van. The fourth window, it's the driver's side side window. I did not bother filming it because putting it in was exactly the same process as putting in the first side window and the two rear windows, both of which were covered in previous vlogs and if you didn't see those I'll leave links to those in the video description below. I've also now purchased another water container, the one on the right, slightly smaller, 10 litres, so that the fresh water is 13, the wastewater is 10, and they do now fit in the space available to them, which two of the 13 just, just didn't. So that's good. What I'm in the middle of doing right now is installing my Propex HS2000 propane heater unit. This is the unit and it sucks van air in through that inlet, has a little furnace going, run off the propane, and then pushes warm air out down that tube, which is going to disappear down that somewhere, and comes out in that vent, which is not on yet. It's been a bit of a battle, this, and to show you why, I shall have to take you round the back. You will notice, for a start, that the unit is not on the floor, but raised up and on a little shelf over the wheel arch. This has been a long and somewhat trying experience. My initial plan was that the Propex heater would fit in that gap, but it can't because once all the carpet and the boarding and everything was in, there wasn't um, the 25 millimeters gap around it, which the manufacturers want. So then I thought I'd have the heater here and it would poke the air through that way, but, let me see if I can show you now I've installed it. Coming out the bottom of the heater, uh, the rear one is a, f is a fresh air inlet for combustion. And there's another little spigot coming off the bottom of the unit, which is the exhaust spigot. In other words, there are two long metal tubes coming out the bottom of the unit. And conventionally, you put the unit there drilling two holes for those spigots that go straight out through the bottom of the van. And you attach pipes to those. These are those pipes. And, as I say, one draws in fresh air purely for combustion. The air that's going to be heated is drawn from within the van, but the unit needs to draw air in to work, to actually you know, fire up the gas. And there's also an exhaust vent. The trouble is that right there, underneath right there, is a chassis member of the van. And you don't want to be drilling holes through the chassis members because they're structural. So then, what about putting it here? Well, under that is the spare wheel, so you don't want to be drilling into the spare wheel. And over here, oh, there's another chassis member. Of course, that chassis member extends all the way here, up through the bed unit, so I can't really drill holes for the spigots there. And over here, well, there's nowhere else for the unit to go, and again, the chassis member runs the entire length of the van, leaving you only a possible location there, or I know some people put it under the passenger seat, but as my gas tank is going to be here towards the back of the van, that means I'd have to run gas piping all the way over there, or round under there, which would be a bit of a nuisance. I don't really want to run that much gas piping. And it wasn't in the plan because initially, as I say, I'd thought I was going to have the unit here. So I emailed Propex and said, is it feasible to have the entire unit inside the van, notwithstanding that it has an exhaust spigot on it that will connect to a hose and be rooted outside? As long as it is securely connected to that hose and the hose is definitely rooted outside, can I have the entire unit inside? And I thought they were going to say no, just because anything with an exhaust on it is probably a bad idea. But they said yes, they said it's absolutely fine, as long as obviously you've connected the exhaust hose securely, jubilee clipped it on, used a silicon boot on the junction between the spigot and the exhaust pipe that gives a nice tight seal, and their pipe comes with one of those anyway, they said it's fine. So that means that this little space here, which was going to be really quite dead space because it's underneath the um, hob, two hob unit and the little bit of workspace and it wouldn't really have been any use as a shelf so that was really wasted space but it meant I could mount the Propex here which by the way you can see it's just a little set of brackets on either side. I've given it three centimeters on the side which is half a centimeter more than what they require 
and then drilled holes for the spigots in this piece of wood. I had to make this piece slightly wider than I'd anticipated because of this change of plan, but I put a solid piece on here, 12 mil ply, drilled holes for the spigots, and they now come out, let me just pull out some of this insulation, under here, which you can just about see, the exhaust spigot is the one that's further back, and the metal one you can see is the cold air inlet. And the other thing that Propex advised is that I wrap the exhaust pipe. They wouldn't normally, but they did advise in this instance that I wrap the exhaust pipe in this, um, I think it's some sort of fiberglass, but it's proper um, exhaust pipe insulating wrap that will keep it cool as it comes out of there. And then you see, the whole point is I can then drill holes for them to exit here, which is just floor of the van, and I can put them anywhere to make it work, as opposed to having to have them on the exact place where the spigots come out. That was the trouble. When you've got that unit and you need to set it down, the spigots are in a particular place with respect to the unit. When you just have relatively flexible pipes, I can make the holes where it's convenient and then route the pipes out. So that is what I am going to do. I haven't actually drilled the holes yet, as you can see, because I'm stealing myself to drill holes in the van. That's also meant that the gas cylinder, which was going to go here, has now come over here, and therefore I'll have to drill another hole here for the drop vent. Now, I know I just said that under here is the uh, chassis member, but there is enough space around it and the gas locker can have the drop vent drilled anywhere in it so that I can put it here or here and it doesn't really matter unlike those spigots which had to be in a particular place if the unit was here. I hope all this is making sense. The wiring for the Propex is fairly straightforward as you can see I've wired up what will be 12 volt line coming in here and what they supply you with is two sets of cables, one which goes off to the thermostat, which is that one, and then that one, which is the 12 volt feed, which I don't need that much wire because I've got all the wire myself. And they simply go in through these holes here with little rubber grommets on them, and they plug in on these little white sockety things onto the circuit board. Incidentally, to get this cover off, it's Torx screws, and it's a TT20 Torx screwdriver. You need to get it off, which they don't tell you. The gas connection for the Propex, we're looking down at it now. Um, the gas connection comes in here. And again, this is quite handy because with the gas locker here and the cooker hob here, there's going to be a gas pipe coming straight along here into the back of the gas um, locker. So I can just tee off and go straight down there and in which keeps all the gas pipes together and nice and short. There's just another shot of it with the cover back on the electronics, so you can see the gist of how it's mounted. And the inlet pipe for the air from the van that's going to be warmed up doesn't need any ducting on it, they just say leave that open. They supply you with a little black plastic vent thing to ensure that whatever cupboard you've put the unit in gets enough air but I'm fairly happy that this is going to get enough air where it is anyway. And then those are the two sets of wires, and I need to run... One of those will just connect with that 12-volt wire I've already put in. The other one will go to wherever I'm going to put the um, this, which is the thermostat and control unit. And although that would look quite nice here, it might get slightly in the way. Once the bed is extended out here, you, you could roll onto the control I suppose so that's possibly not a good place for it so I'm thinking perhaps right at the end of the bed and then if you're cold you could just reach out with your toe and turn the unit up that's not a bad idea is it it's a little while later and the heater unit is going to go in that corner so it's at the end of the bed you can activate it with your feet and it's still tucked away and as you can see the wiring I didn't want to cut the wiring and try and resolder all those little connections on so it'll just go wiggle 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 up there I've cut two little channels in those battens and it gets um, it's been put in cable clipped to that batten round the corner sorry wobbly can ha wobbly camera work round there round there wiggle wiggle focus camera thank you 
through the ducting and into the device and then the other one which goes off to the 12 volts is that one which goes off that way. I just realised I don't think I've shown you this shelf across the back have I? There's going to be panelling hiding all that wiring and then the control unit for the heater will sit on that. This is going to be blanked off. I've been toying between having a fridge that opens that way but I want a top loading fridge because they're more efficient so I think I'll blank that off and my original plan was always to have a top loader and then this panel will be cut so you can take that off or hinge maybe so you can flip that up and then get into the fridge there and then the gas locker is behind there. None of that is nailed down at the moment because there's more to come. I need to put the backs on and things like that. 